Physical and health education at Springfield College is helping local educators to prevent vaping by giving them practical skills and strategies to use in the classroom. So far, they've conducted training sessions in Springfield schools. Professor Michelle Mooseberger and graduate student Marie Brady joined Carolee McGrath in the studio to explain. We were really excited to work last year collaboratively on campus and through CVS Health Foundation and did land the $50,000 grant that is setting us up to work with pre-service teachers and in-service teachers with a pre-existing program called Catch My Breath, which is a vaping prevention program. So what are the components of the program? Yep, so the program is designed for grades 5 through 12, and it's developmentally appropriate in that there's a separate unit for 5th grade, 6th grade, 7th and 8th, and 9th through 12th. And during the four lesson unit, the students are building skills. So it's not content based as health education would have been years ago when you and I took health in high school. It's skills based. So the students aren't just learning, well, what is, what is an e-cigarette? What are the chemicals involved? But they're learning skills. For example, they're learning refusal skills. So how to say no. And then they're getting practice using those skills in class with their peers and, and role playing in different situations. They're getting advocacy skills. So they're recognizing this is wrong. Companies like Juul are marketing to youth e-cigarettes. This is wrong. This doesn't feel right to me. What can I do about it? So they're gaining advocacy skills and actually getting to put them into practice, writing less letters um, to folks like a state representative or launching a social media campaign. So it's skills-based. It's also evidence-based. We know that from a study that just came out um, in public health report that students who have Catch My Breath at their school are significantly less likely to experiment with e-cigarettes in the year following receiving that program as compared to students at schools that don't have Catch My Breath. So Marie, tell me a little bit about your work, um, your graduate work. I know that you're running a training program. What has been the response? Yes, yeah, so um, so far I've trained um, our, um, our pre-service health and uh, PE teachers at the college and then um, kind of our big workshop this, uh, just a couple weeks ago was with um, the Springfield Public Schools health and PE teachers, and they, I feel like just just watching them kind of get introduced to it throughout that day, like they were so excited about it and being able to, um, we kind of practice a lot of the activities so that they can feel comfortable when they go and implement the unit with their students. So um, it was really cool to just see them, like how excited they were, and they, you know, a lot of them told me after, like, oh, I feel very confident and ready to teach this. I feel like my school really needs it. You know, a lot of them, um, you know, have seen it in their classroom, have seen it in the bathrooms, and it's, you know, it's obviously a big issue. There's been so many deaths from it this past year, and so I think that they're all really, um, just really excited about it, and they know how important it is. And then they, in turn, would, would help educate the other teachers, because this is like the PE teachers, the health teachers are going to um, introduce this curriculum to their students, but it's the English teacher or the history teacher, maybe who's not as familiar, like, with what these things look like because if you're if you're not up on it mm -hmm. you know you might not realize that the kids doing it in the back of the class how do you help uh, equip teachers to deal with that yeah the way that catch my breath is designed it's meant to be a whole child whole school whole community response so focusing not just on the classrooms where uh, the health and physical education teachers are but also what does this look like in a homeroom or advisory classroom uh, reaching out to science teachers that's another a group of folks that could be involved in teaching the unit. And then what can we do as a school? How can we look at our school wellness policy? How can the students look at the school wellness policy and critique it and offer suggestions? And then how do we reach out to our family members and support them in understanding what we're doing in terms of vaping prevention? And what are you hearing from teachers as far as what they're, they're seeing in the classroom? Because I would say it's pretty risky for a kid yeah. to do it, but they're doing it they're doing right it. in yeah. front of the yeah. teacher. It's just, it's crazy because there's so many, like I've done a lot of research on this topic since I got this position. Um, and there's actually like apparel, you know, and like just certain um, like lanyards and like things like that that are made specifically to like hide the device. So like there's like sweatshirts with like strings that um, like you put it in and it's like very discreet. Uh, but some kids will even just like put it up their sleeve or or just kind of do it in plain sight because it's, you know, they know, they know that their teacher might not even have recognize it or have any idea because right. it does look like just a little, um, like a USB flash drive or like a, you know, just they look like everyday items a lot of the time. So it's hard to even distinguish unless you're like very, very aware of what it looks like. Sure, it could have fooled teachers and, and certainly mm -hmm. 
parents alike. How, how do you drive home the point, though? Because if, if kids are, are, are willing to be that, you know, risky, how do you drive home the point to them that, hey, this is bad for you? This is really going to be a problem down the road because you can throw numbers at them and they're just going to be like, whoop, that's right over my head. Like, how do you like really make that point? That's where some folks are asking, well, why are you working with fifth grade students? But the fifth grade students that we had as student leaders that came to the workshop in January, we knew this is this is perfect. We're getting them at the right time before they've truly been exposed and offered e-cigarettes, and they are jumping right on board. They are they believe in themselves. We are helping them to build self-confidence. We're helping them to build advocacy skills and communication skills so that they can educate their peers and their family members and out into the community. So catching them early is really important. Uh, but still, uh, the student leaders that we had all the way through 12th grade, the teachers in the schools selected the right students, I would mm -hmm. say, to be those student leaders, and that's where it's going to come from. It's not Marie and myself. It's not the teacher standing in the front of the room or even in the discussions that go on within the unit, but it's those student leaders and the student facilitators within the unit that um, are really making a difference for their peers. I think that though you would have student leaders and you have certain kids that are going to be on board, but how do you help them communicate that to other kids who, who don't have the same courage or self-esteem to tell you know, another kid, listen, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not doing that. How do you do that? Once people start realizing a big thing um, that uh, the Catch My Breath curriculum kind of points out is that um, even though there's a lot of, there's huge numbers of kids vaping, um, but it's still the norm that the students aren't vaping. So like you might feel like everyone around you is, um, but when you look at the statistics and the percentages, it's actually um, the majority are not vaping, but kids are thinking that everyone's doing it and oh, I need to fit in, I need to do it too. And it's like, it just isn't worth it when you think about all the things that have happened.